Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a brand new series, as you can see, and it's the Fabric Modding Series, where I'm going to show you how to create mods in Minecraft. We're going to create custom items, custom blocks, custom models, custom mobs, and all that jazz. So if you've never done any coding before, this could be a great introduction to it. I'm going to show you how to use an IDE, how to use a text editor, and how to apply coding skills in an actual practical manner instead of just coding, you know, little puzzles in a terminal. We're going to actually apply it and use our knowledge to create mods for Minecraft. So I will do my best to explain it to the beginner. And a lot of this stuff, if you've never coded before, a lot of this stuff, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. But again, just, just get the repetition in. You will eventually start to see patterns. You'll start to make sense of it all. And also, if you really want to learn coding, then I would advise looking at other sources, because if you don't know the language and the syntax, then the coding is going to be a lot harder. Anyway, let's get right into it. First things first is you're going to need to download a JDK, which has the Java language in it. So if you go to the website I linked in the description, we're going to download Eclipse version of Java. This seems to work very well for me. Other versions will work also, but sometimes the other versions can have little quirks in them that can cause issues down the line. This one works well for me, so I'm using it in this case. Now make sure you come down to version, and select 21-LTS, package type JDK, very important, and then select your operating system. In this case, I'm doing Windows. And then in most cases, you're going to want to download the Time64. This is for a 64-bit system. I'm sure almost all of you are going to need that. So this is the one I'm going to get. And then come down here, JDK, I'm going to download the MSI. It'll download up in the top right. I already have this installed, so it's not going to let me install it again, but I will run through it. Just open up what you just installed. Click next. And usually it'll just keep saying next, next. In this case, once you get to this page though, this is very important. See where it says set or override at Java underscore home variable. Drop down this little menu and make sure to click will be installed on local hard drive. This will help us avoid errors in the future. Just do that. It will save you so much time, so much hassle. Check this little box, hit next, keep going through the pop-ups until you hit install, and then you hit finish. Now, after we've downloaded the JDK, we can hop over to IntelliJ IDEA. This is an IDE, which is an integrated development environment, which is basically just a fancy text editor that's going to allow us to write and create Java programs. And in this case, creating Minecraft mods is just creating a Java program. So. When you come to this website that I linked in the description, JetBrains, you're going to see Ultimate. Before you do anything, do not download that. First, you can select your operating system up top. I'm going to do Windows and then scroll down in the link I provided. You will see Community Edition at the bottom. This is the free version. This is the one we're going to be using for every single video in this tutorial series. This is the one we are going to download. Again, Ultimate is going to ask you for money. We do not want to pay money and it is overkill. We do not need that for what we're about to do. Community Edition will suffice as more than enough. So come down to the download button and hit download. And this is going to download the installer just like before. I already have it installed, but you're just gonna run through the steps. Also, if you are a student, you can use your student email address, I'm pretty sure, and get IntelliJ Ultimate for free. Don't take my word on it, but again, that's not necessary. We're gonna be using the community version entirely free. And once you get that downloaded, you just run it. And now we have IntelliJ downloaded. Now, after that, we need to do one more thing and it is downloading a template. This site right here is going to make your life so much easier. It is a godsend. The Fabric Template Mod Generator saves us so much time. It downloads all these configurations for us and basically gives us a nice template to start building our mod from so that we don't have to do a bunch of the setup ourselves. It's very important, just follow what I do here, especially if you've never done modding before. I advise just copy what I do here. So for the name, we are just going to do example mod. And now come over here, you'll see this use custom ID button, click use custom ID. And I'm just going to make it all lowercase, all one word example mod. So this is going to be our mod ID. Make sure you keep that one word all lowercase, that's sort of the convention, stick with it. Now for our package name, this is going to be the package that the mod is sort of contained within. I'm going to make it net.grapenugs, which is my name, dot example mod or the mod ID. So in this case, you know, if you were using your name, you could do com dot or net dot your name dot mod ID. That's all I've done here. Should be pretty easy to follow so far. And then the version of Minecraft we're going to be using is 1.21. Now tune in for this part because this is very important. I cannot emphasize enough how important this part is because if you mess this part up, 
you're going to run into issues down the line and it's going to be a pain. So where it says split client and common sources, uncheck this box right here. Make sure this is not checked and then come up to data generation and check this box. Again, this is so incredibly important. Make sure you do this step or you're going to have issues. And then once we have all that done, we can hit download template zip. So now that we have it downloaded, what I want to do is open the folder and this is the folder that I want it in. And we're going to see the template mod. It's zipped up right here. I'm going to right click and drag just into the same folder and hit extract. Now what I want to do is change the name right here, just the very last part. See example mod dash template. I'm going to change it to fabric dash example dash 1.21.x. So this it doesn't really matter what you name it. That's what I'm going to name it in this case and extract it right here. It's going to open it up once we're done extracting. And now we are ready to open IntelliJ. But before we do so, make sure you come to this little drop down menu inside the folder we just extracted. Come to this little arrow and then hit Control C. We're going to copy this path right here. Now we can open up IntelliJ for the first time. And if this is your first time opening it, you might be greeted with a slightly different screen. But regardless, you're going to see these three options at the top, new project, open or clone repository. So in this case, we're going to hit open and then backspace all this nonsense right there and control V paste that path that we just copied from our extracted folder right into here. You'll see it's fabric example. Hit OK. Now the mod is loading up. You can see it is downloading and importing the project. It's configuring all the files. What you want to hit is exclude folders. Just if it says allow, just hit allow. Then we can come to this little hammer right here, the build option in the bottom left. You could see the mod is configuring, it's being built. Just let it do its thing. It might take one to two minutes depending on your computer. And in the end, you will either see build successful or build failed. And I will show you what to do in either case. Okay, so we could see it took 53 seconds, build successful. If yours did say build failed though, then we, what we can do to fix that is hit these four lines up top and project structure under project. Make sure that the SDK is set to 21. It doesn't matter if it's any of these, just make sure it's 21. And then the language level also is 21. And then hit OK. After we do that, we can open up project settings. And then down at the bottom here, we're going to hit build execution and deployment. Open up build tools, Gradle, and then make sure Gradle JVM, make sure this is set to the 21 also. Once you have both of those done, hit OK. Make sure to hit apply also if you're changing those. Then we can come up in the right corner and see this little Gradle icon, this little elephant. Open that and then hit sync all Gradle projects. Let it do its thing and there we go, build successful. Now we are inside of our project for the first time. We can open up fabric-example, come down to source, SRC, Java, and you could see that we have all of our stuff here. This is the example mod. This is the example mod file right here or class. Now, if your packages are uh, bundled up together, what you can do is click these three dots, or I'd say just do this regardless, but click these three dots, appearance, and then make sure compact middle packages and Latin packages are not checked. Uncheck those if they are checked and then come back to the project. And inside example mod on in the on initialize function, I like to delete whatever is there. And then up top, we can delete these comments as well. Now yours might not have this, but what you're going to want to do is if it doesn't say this, we're going to say public static final string, and then you can hit tab to auto complete and then do mod underscore ID equals. And then we're going to make it our mod ID example mod semicolon. Now this is going to set our mod ID to example mod. Okay. And then I also like to create the logger. Now, if this isn't here for you, what we're going to do is just type this line of code out right here. You might need to import a couple of these right here, these import statements, if you don't have these already. Again, you should have it, but if not, type in public static final logger this, and you should be good. Again, most of you won't have to do anything though, because this should all be here for us. After that, inside the example mod right here, inside the example mod, Folder. What we're going to want to do is right click and hit new Java class. And what we're going to call it example mod client. Now notice how I'm doing capital capitalizing the first letter of each word that is convention. I think it's called camelback convention. That's what you're going to want to do for your class names. Capitalize the first letter of each word and make sure this is called example mod client. This implements client mod initializer and you could see 
Client Model Initializer to auto-complete, we can just come down here and just hit tab and it'll import the necessary file that we need at the top. Now you will have a red line underlining this probably, hover over it, hit implement methods, okay. And that creates our uninitialized function. Now we are done with the uninitialized class and we can make our way over to resources and fabric.mod.json. And in this file, we're going to change a couple of things. First though, under the mixins right here, here it says mixins and then the bracket comma, just make a new line and then do client. Add a couple brackets. And inside the client, what we're gonna do is add the path that leads to this class that we just added, the example mod client. So I'll just type it out and explain in a moment, but we're going to do mod client and make a bunch of typos while I'm doing it. But essentially what this does is you can see net.grapenugs.examplemod.examplemod client. That just is the pathway that leads to this class. So now we have that registered in here and up top, we can change a few things. You can see the description. Let me close this description. This is just whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna say this is an example mod for YouTube, exclamation point. Now the authors, me, you can do your name. I'm just gonna do Rape Nugs. I could do Jack, but in this case, I'll just make it my YouTube name. At the top, we can see homepage. And this right here is going to be your homepage. It could be your website or your YouTube channel. You can change it to whatever URL you want. I'm just gonna leave it because I don't really care about that right now. And then for sources, this is going to be your GitHub repository. Right now, I'm just going to leave it as is also, but this is going to be the link. If you do decide to create a GitHub repository with this file or with this project and upload it to GitHub, this will be the source link to it. Come down here and change the license to MIT. You can do that as well. And basically that is it for the fabric mod JSON file. For the last step in this process is we're going to open up the mixin folder in an example mixin double click on it and open the class. And you can see it says Minecraft server at the top, which you're gonna do is hover over it and hold control. And you'll see it'll become blue. You can click on it, make sure to click on that. And now it opens up the folder. You will see this blue line at the top and it'll say choose sources. What you wanna do is come down to the bottom left and open up the terminal. And in the terminal, you're going to type dot slash gradle w gen sources, enter. And this is going to download the proper sources that we need to use for this file. It should just take a minute. Boom, nine seconds, successful. You can see that we have our sources now and we can come up to the top where it says choose sources, click on that. And now we have this brand new file, make sure this new .jar file, click the one that we just downloaded and hit okay. Now it'll load in and create all of our sources. As you could see, Boom, all this stuff, you have the comments up here. All this stuff can be very useful if you wanna look through it. Uh, for now, I'm not going to, but it says 10 errors, it doesn't matter. Those are not errors, it's going to work. And with that, we have everything we need to set up the mod. Now we can come over to Minecraft client and we can run Minecraft for the first time. So run Minecraft, perfect, there we go. You can see it's doing all this stuff down here. You got the Minecraft window open. Press enter to there enable goes the, narrator. the narrator. I'm going to just continue. And you can see we have Minecraft open. What I like to do is turn off the music though. Not a fan of the Minecraft music, to be honest. And we can go in and create a world if we wanted to. And that's basically it for setting up the Minecraft mod. All right, well, that is basically it for setting up everything you need to set up for the mod to work. You can see we ran Minecraft. Everything's good, we're in the clear. You can see the link to the next video right here. And this is going to be the video where we're discussing custom items. And then following that, we're going to do custom blocks and so on. I hope you enjoyed this. If you learned something, then you will definitely learn something from the next video and the following videos in this series where we're actually creating the mods in Minecraft. Hope to see you there and thank you for watching.